studied literature at university and I wanted to be a writer. I wrote novels um, and throughout my 20s I was writing novels but not publishing them so I'm making no money from my writing. Um, working a lot of different day jobs um, to survive. Uh, also traveling and um, I finally decided that I really wanted to write nonfiction. I wanted to write journalism, but, but long form. Um, I wanted to write about politics. Um, this was after uh, my last day job. I was teaching high school in uh, South Africa, outside Cape Town. This is in the bad old days of apartheid. Um, so I was teaching in a black high school. Education was racially segregated. And, um, and it was a very intense political year. The, the students went out on strike for three months protesting apartheid in education. And, um, and there was a lot of violence and, and I really admired some of the activists, my colleagues, our students in, in the community where I worked. And I thought this, by then I was in my late 20s. I had done some travel writing but I'd never worked as a journalist. So I decided this is what I, want, I care about, power and, and, and injustice and, and politics, and, and I want to write nonfiction now. So I started freelancing, and um, first from Africa, then, then I came back to the United States, and I was more and more interested in news, and I actually um, my first big piece for The New Yorker, um, which was a, one of the magazines I wrote for, but my first big assignment was to write about a newsroom, was to write about a group of black newspaper reporters on a white liberal paper in Johannesburg. Um, and so I just, I kind of uh, sneaked into this newsroom um, and just found a desk and just started spending my time there and pretty soon the guards and everybody assumed I worked there and I was just hanging around with this little group of black reporters who were covering the social conflict then it was really really strong this is late 80s and uh, so I had experience in a newsroom but I didn't really have a job and after maybe two months spending just living in there every day coming to work and going out to cover stories with these guys I'm not writing for the paper they're writing for the paper and I'm writing about them uh, uh, this is as close as I ever came to being a news reporter and near the end of that time I remember I went to the editors like the editor-in-chief and said I want to interview you and they said who are you anyway I see you every day who are you who hired you I said nobody hired me I'm with the New Yorker magazine. I'm here to interview you. Hey, You know, I've been inside watching things the whole time. Um, so, and, and they were very nice and I interviewed them and I actually wrote a book about um, these, this group, but also about the press in South Africa during, during this conflict, during this crisis. It was actually pretty difficult financially. Um, I, uh, I mentioned I was living in Africa when I decided to um, start working as a freelancer, as a journalist, and then I came back to the United States and I was making so little money, I went and lived with my parents in California, so it was very embarrassing. I turned 30 years old, living with my parents, broke, um, um, everybody's nightmare. And, um, but I was getting more assignments, slowly getting more assignments. I got a couple of big assignments and I could move out <laughs> and pay rent at age 30 or 31. Um, and uh, so it was, a, it was a difficult period of transition <clears throat> because I'd been out of the house for 10 years before that at, at university and living overseas and many, many jobs, including some pretty good jobs. But now I was freelancing and it was, it was like starting over. It was like being a kid again. Um, but eventually it worked out. It's, it's difficult to make a living writing books. You have to sell a lot of books to, to, to make a living. Um, but um, I, I have had to combine, you know, working, working, working as a journalist for The New Yorker. I've been just exclusively there for a long time now. And um, 
and, and doing books at the same time. Um, as I say, books are more satisfying. They, they, they last longer, they're in the library, and, and, um, and you really, you know, you work so long and, and, and you try to finish it the, the best you can possibly write it, and, 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 it, and it feels like a, uh, not something that's going to be forgotten next week. Um, but, as I say, um, career-wise and financially, um, books are, are a big gamble. I mean, some books make a lot of money and most books make no money or, or very little money. I mean, you need to, as a journalist, you, usually, you need to keep your day job at the newspaper, at the magazine, normally. There is a big distinction, obviously, between doing first-person writing and um, and doing, you know, pure journalism, third-person writing, no eye character. Uh, big distinction. But um, I have been able to work in between, mostly, um, because because at the New Yorker we don't write news. You know, we don't. That's not what we publish. It's um, it's more narrative, generally. I mean, we publish many things, poetry and fiction, but but the 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 long form nonfiction <clears throat> has the option to include the first person character, the I character. You have the option. You don't have to, and and but it's okay if you if you, if the material kind of requires a point of view that's that strong. Often um, in my work, I, I do a lot of international reporting. Sometimes in, in situations that are quite confusing for the reader, they don't understand the terms, it's all in another language, it's in another country they will never see. And, and it becomes important to put a, a first person narrator. And you know, I went here, I saw this, I understood this, I did not understand that. It really helps, it anchors the reader's experience. Um, and, and just doing straight journalism becomes too dry. You need, you need that. And sometimes you need, um, in different stories, you need a, a first person who is not so reliable, who is confused, who, is, um, who even is, is maybe the fool in a story. It's kind of a, uh, a foil, we say sometimes. It's a, um, uh, it's a character, it's not really you. You're kind of playing with a with a character to have an effect, to 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 convey information, but also for dramatic effect. Um, now, doing news, you don't have this option. Huh? Um, this is this is strictly long form, and the magazine I work for that allows this.